And welcome to the backstory for the week ending March 8th, 2014. This is where I explain the backstory behind some of the major anime and manga news stories of the week. Uh, starting with the news of a, an individual in Russia who has been sentenced to three years of jail time for disseminating Japanese animated child pornography. Uh, as I mentioned in the news, this is the first time that someone in Russia has actually uh, been sent to jail for this crime. So presumably, folks have been arrested for it, and they may have been fined, for example, but they've never actually been thrown into jail for it, uh, which implies something is, is uh, pretty serious here. Um, the defendant, uh, who uh, resides in uh, Volgograd, uh, was accused of he uploaded six volumes of anime onto a social networking site and uh, kept them up from 2010 through 2013. So that's probably why you know, the book was thrown at him. This wasn't just a, a you know, uh, throwing something up there for a few weeks. The interesting thing is that the anime in question uh, included minors aged 14 through 18 in sexual situations. Now, in Japan, you can get away with that because uh, of um, Japanese, well, because of age of consent in Japan. Um, the age of consent varies from uh, area to area and um, you know, uh, section to section within Japan. So you know, it is legal to portray 16-year-olds, for example, having sex in, in Japan, depending on where you set it, because it can be perfectly legal there. Um, so that's one of the, the interesting things here. Is that this is not um, uh, child pornography in the sense of uh, you know, young children. It's pornography in the sense of what Russia defines child pornography. Now, I bring this up because different countries have different laws about what constitutes child pornography. And it's quite complicated because um, in, uh, in some countries, it is simply a matter of... of very well-defined rules about what you can or can't show. In some countries, child pornography laws are actually rolled up as part of other laws. So, for example, in Japan, for a long time, there were no explicit laws against child pornography. Those were all part of the obscenity laws. So, child pornography was certainly illegal in Japan, and there are plenty of cases about it, but it wasn't explicitly called out in law until quite recently, actually. I think it was you know, five or ten years ago that they actually, you know, uh, wrote law specifically about uh, child pornography. So, um, again, it, it depends on how countries define this and, and, and handle it. I think it, it says a lot that this is the first time in Russia they've actually jailed someone for it. Uh, generally speaking, uh, child pornography is such a significant thing um, you know, within the law that if someone's caught for it, they throw the book at them and they, they try to you know, nail a person as much as possible. So I, I, this implies that Russia has been very lax about this in general. This might be because um, it's considered a, a mild thing, especially if it's anime, you know, I mean, that, that's a little different than, um, you know, real physical child pornography. So it, it could be that Russia has said, okay, you know, if, if it's anime, we're probably not going to go after you too much. Um, but you know, clearly this guy had it up for, for a long time. Uh, we don't have much more information uh, about this beyond that story. Um, I can see if I can dig into that and find out more information about the, uh, the details of the case. But uh, this does you know, highlight the fact that you should be aware of the laws in your country about what, what constitutes child pornography and what is or is not legal to have around there. It's just worth knowing. Um, Meanwhile, moving on to um, uh, something a little less creepy. New Doraemon CGI film. Um, Doraemon is a very, very popular manga and anime franchise going back decades. It first launched, I believe, in the, the 60s in Japan. The anime has been going since the 70s. And by going, I mean there are new episodes being produced today um, for a show that started in the 70s. That's how long this show has been going on. And they've announced a new uh, CG film and in which the narrator stated, this is Doraemon's first and final story, which is kind of remarkable. Uh, and Doraemon uh, tells the main character, Nobita, I can't stay here anymore. So this implies that this might be tying up the Doraemon franchise. That would be surprising. It's kind of like making a final uh, Sesame Street story. Why would you do that? We'll see. Um, the, you know, the stronger implication is that this is 
more of a self-contained story that will tell a kind of a side story that 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 goes in some kind of a loop. Uh, mainly because Doraemon is a robot cat from the future that's sent back to uh, 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 to be well, um, he's sent back in the past to our our present and has adventures with Nobita, the main character. So should be interesting to see where that goes. And it's remarkable that a children's film is taking that step. Um, and, and, and even in its trailer, suggesting this might be the final Doraemon movie. Is it a gimmick? Maybe, but it's still an interesting way of doing things. Um, finally, I wanted to mention, uh, what was it? Uh, going, oh yes, um, the, uh, the Haruhi Omnibus. So Hatchet Book Group has announced that they're going to release a 500-page uh, anthology of Haruhi Suzumiya uh, stories. Uh, now, this is worth mentioning because the Haruhi kind of publication situation is a little complicated in terms of the number of different things out there. This is a collection of manga and illustrations by different artists uh, and presumably different writers as well. And so it's not as far as I understand, canonical stories within the Haruhi universe. Uh, it's just different side stories involving the characters. Uh, so we're going to have 500 pages worth of these anthology stories. There were actually f four different anthology stories released in Japan, but presumably Hatchet only uh, was able to license the first three. I'm not sure when the fourth was released. It, it could have been a very recent release, so they could have just not been able to, to, to grab that yet. Um, and that's separate from the original light novels. Haruhi started as a series of novels, light novels, short novels, in other words, um, that were then adapted into anime, and there were various manga spin-offs and so forth and so on. So this is just little little side stories, short side stories set in the Haruhi universe, um, separate from those light novels which tell the canonical story, if you will. And that'll come out in October on October twenty eighth, uh, called the Celebration of Haruhi Suzumiya, retailing for twenty six bucks, which means you'll get it for probably eighteen or twenty. Uh, when you go out there and, and check out ANN for the covers. There's some really cute covers, actually, for that. Uh, I hope they use the third one, actually, because it has Haruhi holding a, uh, a page of manga. It's kind of a cute little self-referential thing. So we'll see. Um, so that's the, sort of the backstory on what's going on with Haruhi. And um, so that's it for the backstory for this week. Thank you for watching, and see you next week.